Hi YouTube, in this video I'm going to be making Predator. It's been on my list for a really long time. Um, this is a head that I bought at a car boot sale. I think it cost me about £2 or £3. I bought two heads at the same time. Uh, one of them I used in the last video to make a chatterer from Hellraiser. He's the guy with the lips that are kind of pulled back and you can see his gums and his teeth really clearly and he goes around chasing people going... Anyway, um, so Predator, yeah, obviously I've got to make a Predator, one of the coolest kind of movie creatures there are. So here you can see I've been using aluminium foil, um, kitchen paper and PVA glue just to get the overall shape of the head. This will actually dry really strong. You can't just use normal PVA glue, it's got to be super PVA glue or flooring glue, which is also really tough when it dries. Okay, here you can see I've cut out a lot of the face. I needed this to be hollow because um, the mouth is quite deep. Uh, you can see I've added an eyebrow ridge at the front here as well. Everything will just get built up gradually. Obviously using the um, aluminium foil and the kitchen paper and PVA glue is quite a cheap way of working. I know this is really rough looking at the moment, but it has to go through a lot of these stages where it does look rough until it ends up looking good. Um, this one does end up looking really good. I'm really pleased with it. So um, you'll just have to bear with me. But it's worth watching all the um, stages of this video because uh, I think you'll learn quite a bit from it if you haven't done anything like this before and you want to have a go. Okay, here's a couple of jaws that I made out of aluminium foil. The aluminium foil is so easy to kind of get a very kind of basic shape with it and then you can just keep building up from that. So I really like it as a way of working. I did get through quite a lot of aluminium foil, mainly because I had to make all these dreads. I suppose I could have uh, found something else to make the dreads out of, but uh, this seemed like a really good idea. I had quite a few rolls of aluminium foil around, so uh, yeah, you can see. This actually, quite a lot of this Predator, the, the main amount of time that was taken was actually making the dreads. <laughs> so something to think about. Okay, these are all the teeth. I've made these out of milliput. And what I've done is just laid them on a piece of aluminium foil. And then once they've dried, they take about four hours to dry. Then I can sand them down as well and refine them even more. This is the back of the throat. Um, just a little simple shape. It's going to be tucked right back there. And then I can build on top of this and build up the layers that kind of form um, the back of the mouth and the cheeks as well um, the eyes yeah just two simple balls there right here you go with the sort of upper lip put on with milliput as well um, what's quite nice about if you make the teeth separately is you can just make a sort of rough gum shape and then push the teeth up into the gums and that forms quite a realistic kind of look um, i do quite a lot of teeth like this you can see here as well i've put the eyes in place and then this again is a good way of working. I actually cut one of the eyes in half so they're kind of like dome shaped and then stuck that on and then I can build all of the eyelids and things around that. Right, remember I said about the teeth and how you could sand them down when they were dried? I'll just show you what these have ended up looking like because I sanded them a, a little bit and you've ended up with these kind of nice um, sort of edges and kind of flatter parts and it also sharpens up the tips of the teeth quite nicely. I wanted them to look obviously particularly ferocious so um, it was worth spending a bit of extra time on it. Right this is what it looks like with the top two teeth added. You can see I've put some milliput at the sides there to kind of hold it in place and what I'll do is I'll wait for those to dry and as they dry they kind of um, stiffen slightly so it means you can kind of fine tune where you want the teeth to be positioned once I'm really happy with it, I'll add extra mini putt and smooth it all in. You can see I've added these kind of wrinkles above the upper lip. And yeah, the detail in the back of the mouth there, I forgot to mention before. You can see those kind of ridges and things and those kind of um, lumps at the back of the throat. They'll all add to it, especially when I come to paint it as well. It'll look particularly nice and gory in that area. Okay, you can see a few extra stages here. I've obviously added the lower um, main teeth and got those in position what i did was i drilled holes in them and i put some wire into them and then i've uh, 
added the wire on and then built up around that with some milliput. Again, as this stiffens, I can change the angles of them a little bit um, to refine it. Right, with the dreads, I've stuck on the main rows of dreads and then I realised that I wanted to make some more um, to go along the top edge of the head and also a few shorter ones to go underneath as well to really thicken up the look of the dreads. You can see I've put a base on and I've added a neck as well. So the neck goes right down onto the base. I just padded all that out with more aluminium foil to kind of thicken it up. Um, I actually end up changing this, but I'll talk about that in a second. You can see here the row of dreads, but I definitely need an extra layer um, because he has these kind of bumps on the top of his head and it almost appears like a dread comes from each bump. So I think that will really help the overall kind of look of him being like Predator. Right, I really start loving him at this point. Um, what I've done is added bumps all around the top ridge of the head. Again, these are just with aluminium foil, just pushed in. But then when you coat them as well with some kitchen paper and PVA glue, it adds that kind of wrinkly texture, which make, makes it look a lot more like skin. You can see I've done a similar thing here. Well, I've added milliput kind of um, bulges around the top of his um, eyebrow ridge and this again like if I had just left it as just the milliput they would have looked too stuck on but because I coated them with the kitchen paper and PVA glue you get all the wrinkles again at the edges and it ends up looking a lot more like skin after you've painted it. In the eye areas I've just added these kind of uh, eyelids and extra wrinkles around the eyes and also this kind of main ridge that goes around the edge of the eye sockets. You can see I've added cheek flaps here, which was just, you know, milliput really kind of um, flattened out just by squeezing it really by hand, um, nice and thin. And again, I can refine the edges of the cheeks at the end, but um, that gives quite a nice look straight away. There are some bits of um, leftover cheek from the like the head that was in there originally I'm going to cut those back a bit and refine it even more later but this really starts to give the overall predator kind of feel to the face okay so something suddenly occurred to me um, which was that the face was looking straight directly forwards and it was at a kind of level angle and it I suddenly thought if you've got a creature that is kind of you know making a really angry face and you know kind of shouting or you know that sort of effect you'd want the head to be kind of angled backwards you never see somebody kind of shouting at someone with their um head just at a level position so what i ended up doing was sawing his head off um at the neck the middle of the neck and then i sawed a chunk out and i just tilted the head back and then stuck it back on again uh, and then covered everything again with the pva glue um, so that it's all nice and firmly in place and this actually made such a difference I mean it might be hard to see on the screen but um, yeah in real life it, it made such a difference okay and you can see I've added like the extra row of dreads all the way around the edge and that gives you a much more you know kind of thicker appearance to the dreads okay then I needed to add these kind of um well, they look like metal metal tubes along the dreads but what i did was i just used the inside rolls from <laughs> the aluminium foil here you go i've been collecting these for quite a while every time i use them and they just seemed kind of ideal i had to kind of cut them and make them a bit thinner and then i've glued them on with the super pva glue and i've just used a cable tie just to hold them in place while they dry and then I thought what I'll do is I'll take the cable ties off once they've dried, paint them and then I'll add PVA glue over the top of everything to seal it and also to kind of protect it and make it stronger. Um, and that will keep those little cardboard tubes in position more um, and they'll be much stronger overall. So this was a pretty quick sculpt for me really. It took me about three days to get to this point. And obviously that wasn't three solid days either. So yeah, pretty good. I think just because I got into it so much and I really wanted to do a good job of it and make it look like Predator. Anyway, at this point I was getting really excited about painting it. And then 
I just painted the whole thing black initially. This is because I wanted it to be really dark in all of those kind of really deep areas. So if you paint something black initially, it just means then if you end up doing a lot of dry brushing over the top, all of the deepest areas remain really quite dark. Uh, and I really like that effect. So it took a long time, mainly again because of the dreadlocks. If you imagine you're trying to paint these dreadlocks and they're all, it's just a big tangle you're trying to paint inside them. Um, in hindsight, it might have been easier just to kind of have a bucket of black paint and dip the whole thing in the black paint, you know, um, just to get into all of those little nooks and crannies in between the dreadlocks. But it was still good fun, so I, I didn't mind putting the time in to get it to this stage. Next, I just made a brown paint by mixing red and green together. Um, I'm using System 3 acrylic paints to do this and you can see all I've done is do very rough dry brushing over all of the main high areas. I know that I'll be doing a lot more dry brushing in much brighter colours later so I didn't need it to particularly cover very well or anything. I just wanted it to give an overall effect of it being two-tone black and brown rather than just black and it has done something. On the dreads, I wanted to keep them mainly um, dark, but I did add some brown at the tops and also either side of each of those kind of metal tubes. Right, he looks a little bit weird at this stage. He looks like some kind of bald clown or something, but you'll just have to bear with me. This next stage, I was just adding this cream color, which is a mix of yellow ochre and white, and again, dry brushed onto all of the high areas brings out all the eyebrow ridges and all the bumps on his head, that kind of thing. Um, also, you know, the main teeth, the smaller teeth. Um, you can see I've painted inside the mouth. Um, that's just with a mix of the cream colour that I've just told you about and then added a little bit of cadmium red to that. Um, I've painted a few veins and things into the uh, edges of the cheeks as well. Dry brushed on the neck. Um, and you can see it's starting to sort of come together, but I need to add much more to kind of bring it out and match it up to the um, screenshots that I've got from the actual movie. OK, this next stage took quite a bit longer to do, really, because it's the kind of the patterning. Um, so you can see it's almost like a sort of a giraffe kind of pattern. Um, that I'm adding. So on the eyebrow ridges and what you're trying to do is, you know, make it pretty dark so just using black paint or black with a little bit of brown added to it um, for the kind of the bigger shapes and then fading it as well so on the top of the head you're doing a similar sort of thing with like a, a really deep orange color and then you're gradually fading that so it gets to a lighter orange and then an even lighter orange and fades into the top of the head um, and overall, like, really pleased with how this kind of patterning went. It really starts to look much more like Predator. But I thought at this point it needs to be really quite um, glossy. Whenever you look at him in the movies, he's got this sort of wet look to him. And, um, you know, maybe that's because he's in a jungle or maybe it just is the way he is. But it really adds to the kind of creepiness. So at this point, you can see that I've coated him with... A layer of the PVA glue. Now when you first do this obviously because it's a white glue it looks awful like it does here but I thought I'd show you it at this stage and you can see here look I've painted like half the neck but not the other half um, and you've just got to kind of be patient because as the glue dries obviously it dries clear. You can't do it too thick if you do it really really thick you'll get these areas where it won't dry completely clear it will be you know um, really kind of opaque looking but um, I've learned to do a layer that is reasonably thick but not too thick and it gives it this glossy look but it also toughens everything up so here you can see as well on the um, dreadlocks I've painted those tubes a kind of gold color you can see in the eyes here really shiny actually in the eye areas and in the mouth area I used UV resin as well. So if you put a bit of UV resin on there um, and then you shine a UV torch onto it, it dries and that looks even wetter still. So the top of the head here, this is just the PVA glue. 
you can see it gives it this nice kind of glossy sheen and i think it really adds to you know where all the patterns and everything are makes it look much more movie real um yeah the little metal tubes on his dreads of painted gold i may add because i think they have some little black markings on them as well so i may add the black markings at some point but for now hopefully this gives you guys all that idea what it should look like i didn't extend all of those tubes around to the back of his head because i just thought i'm only ever going to view this from the front it's going to be like in a cabinet or something you're not going to see the back of it so i didn't bother wasting time putting all the tubes on the back as well so if you've enjoyed this video hit subscribe to see any videos that i post up in the future thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next video